very warm welcome to all of you and thank you mithun uh, for those wonderful uh, kind words that you uh, shared about me and thank you honeycomb for putting across this wonderful event we have close to around 84 people already uh, and uh, another around 94 people already in this uh, session so that's brilliant i'm hoping that some more people will join us uh, along the way and uh, yeah so i just put in a a uh, message there as to what is a, who is an amateur. An amateur is a person who takes part in a sport or an activity for pleasure and not for money as a job. So I was looking at the poll and said that there were some amateurs there and there were some people who were experts. Um, I consider myself an amateur. Uh, I consider someone who does photography not as a profession, but as somebody who loves photography and I do it because I love, and I'm not ashamed to say I'm an amateur. I'm proud to say I'm an amateur. So, I, I mean, I would like to tell you that uh, those of you are saying, feeling a little bad saying that, oh, I'm an amateur. An amateur means somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, a mediocre or, uh, uh, or a person who is just, um, uh, what do you say, uh, somebody who's just learning. Uh, yeah, so could be, but uh, an amateur is somebody who just loves what they do. So that's who I am. I'm an amateur and I'm not a professional. So while I've done professional work, I do a lot of professional work for some uh, people. That's not my mainstay. I, I'm a corporate trainer by profession and uh, I do this because I, I love uh, the art of photography. So uh, uh, what am I going to do today? I'm going to share with you uh, as to why somebody should pursue this uh, hobby a little seriously and maybe a few reasons what uh, I could uh, think of, uh, which I could associate. And uh, I mean, uh, I would also say that photography is good for the health at the end of the day. So I'm gonna prove this by end of the session that photography is good for the health. So those of you who want to know why photography is good for the health, so you can stay back and probably I'll give you an idea why photography is good for the health. So let me, let me start um, with one uh, namaskara and namaste and welcome to all of you through my work. And uh, uh, I'd like to start by sharing that uh, on the screen, uh, I'm holding uh, a friend's Hasselblad camera, and uh, this is not mine. Um, and uh, we, you know, I have a special connection to this Hasselblad camera because when I was a little child uh, and I was in school, my dad brought me a brochure, which had a kingfisher diving into the water and catching a fish and it was a Hasselblad brochure and that was the image stayed with me for so long and such a powerful image that I wanted to make it make powerful images like that and for me that was one thing and for a large part of my life I could not afford a camera and uh, I'm thankful for you know uh, the fact that maybe after 30 30 35 years I could actually afford a ca proper camera and I started shooting in film and then moved on to um, the digital version. I started from a six, six to eight, six megapixel digital camera, which is a Canon 350D. Uh, I've started, uh, you know, from that particular camera onwards. So uh, these are some of my awards that I have, uh, you know, uh, got over a period of time uh, from various international uh, agencies like the International Color Awards, Black and White Spider Awards, uh, the, the Moscow International Photo Awards. Uh, and, and, and the reason I'm sharing this uh, with you is that um, I, I wanted to validate my work. I wanted to see if, um, you know, at, at an international arena, if, if I'm doing work, you know, which is good enough, because I've, like I said, I don't pursue it professionally and I love, do it for the love of it. And of course, you get a lot of feedback from people, but when it is pitched against uh, the best of the world, and then somebody is recognizing your work and your name comes up there in the list says, you know, so-and-so USA, so-and-so UK and Shankar Subramani in India. I feel proud as a, uh, from, a, from a country perspective that I represented India and my, our name was there and there are a lot of photographers. And I've been happy to share that many uh, people have been inspired by me sharing my work and my success that a lot of people have seen me and, and also participated. And I have to thank my mentor, Mr. Anand Sharan, um, who's been uh, you know, a driving force in 
uh, TGIS and and me to guide me uh, to to also show us that uh, these are some of the international uh, arenas where we could participate. So well, that's another ball game altogether. We can talk more, but I just wanted to share with you that this is you know something that I needed to validate myself, saying that my work is 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 good enough to be awarded in an international forum. So. Uh, I've also sold pictures, but most of my pictures have been sold for charity. Uh, I have this picture, which I was sold uh, in uh, a Rotary Club in Alaska, and we raised around $400 uh, on just this one image, and it went to a, a charitable cause. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel joyful that, uh, you know, that somebody actually purchased, uh, uh, you know, your, your print. And that's another thing that I see that these days that we share a lot of our work on uh, social media, but we hardly print our images. So I, I think that's another thing that I would like you all to encourage you to do is to try and print your images and see the beauty of your uh, you know, pictures in print. And of course, Honeycomb is there who are doing a great job as far as printing is concerned. And you can definitely check with them. They'll also guide you, they also help you to make these good prints. And this is, uh, a picture which I shot in uh, Jaisalmer, and uh, this is a lady who invited us over into her house, and uh, you know wanted us to have lunch with her, and she was making hot rotis, and I, just, I, my wife and I was sitting next to her, and I was just taking my camera and clicking pictures while she was making her lunch and feeding her children at the end of the day. So I had some great, lovely experiences, uh, you know, doing photography. Um, in, uh, you know, in the last 20 years. So the question is, why should we pursue, um, you know, the, the art of photography is, is something that I would like to, you know, look, showcase some points and maybe uh, show a proof of, uh, you know, why one should pursue it a little seriously. Uh, during COVID, uh, maybe two, two and a half years, a lot of people lost momentum and all their uh, cameras are gathering dust and stuff like that. So maybe I can inspire some of you to, um, uh, to probably you know get your cameras out and start start shooting once again and those of you are already shooting you know maybe you know up your ante a little bit so let me start with a quote which say that i really believe that there are things that nobody would see if i did not photograph them and i think that's one of the key aspects of uh, photography is that you you are able to make these memories uh, I'm sure a lot of you are going back, uh, you know, in, when you go back in time and look at your own pictures and photographs when you were a small young kid uh, or when your parents were young and you, like, you look at it, look at it and say, you're, this is how your parents were when they were a little boy, when your dad was a little boy or grandfather was a little boy. I'm sure now that there's a much better memory uh, over these years, last 30, 40 years compared to the previous years. And this is how you looked when you were in school. And, and what do you have to remember them? And that's just your, just your photograph. If the photograph was not there, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even remember yourself how you were when you were a kid, you know? So that's how important this photograph is. It's, 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 a, it's a memory tool for uh, all of us. So this, this particular picture was shot in Bilbao, Spain. And there's a, there's a ceremony which is called the burial of the sardine. And believe me, I wouldn't have believed that there's such a uh, such an event that happens ever if I not really witnessed this. So, burial of the sardine, uh, you can Google it up and figure out what it, it happens in many places in Spain. And you can look at why this custom is there and all those things. I don't want to get into the details of it, but there's a picture from that. So, yeah, uh, I don't know many of you have said, uh, you know, I, we've seen cloud nine. Uh, I'm on cloud nine and stuff like that, but how many of you have seen cloud nine? And actually I saw cloud nine and this is cloud nine. And, um, uh, you know, if I were to tell you that, look, I saw cloud nine, nobody will actually believe. And, you know, here's, this was a picture which I shot in Leh Ladakh and there is cloud nine right here. And uh, it was there just for a few seconds before the cloud disintegrated. And mind you guys, this is not Photoshop. This is not been done in Photoshop, this was real. Or you could you could actually do this in Photoshop as well, but uh, this is how it was in real time. So this is Cloud Nine for those of you who not seen Cloud Nine. So yeah, we would like to record events and memories, and that is one of the primary uh, primary uh, you know role of photography. And uh, 
you know, those, those of you who are into wildlife photography, this is something that, you know, nowadays wildlife photography is used for conservation. You know, a lot of species are getting extinct. And if you don't really capture these species, you would really not know from years. For example, you know, uh, we have been reintroduced the cheetah in our, uh, uh, in our uh, country. And cheetahs were there uh, all over India and uh, they, they got hunted extensively and they got extinct. And the only pictures that we have are, are old black and white photographs of people, uh, you know, sitting uh, on the, uh, standing on the cheetah with a gun. And these are some pictures. The Asiatic lions, which is now present in the Gir forest, uh, was there from Afghanistan onwards, Pakistan, across this entire belt, we could, we could see lions. And they were, those numbers were reduced to almost 70 or 80 lines at one point of time till the, uh, the Nawab of Junagadh decided to start protecting it. And today we are fortunate that we have around 550, 500 to 550 Asiatic lions in the Sasangir region of uh, Gujarat. And that's the only home for the Asiatic lions. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that we can, we can, we can actually, you know, uh, encourage people to record various species. Uh, it's not only just tigers, but but also butterflies, insects, um, birds, uh, flowers, trees, and there's so much, you know. So uh, you know, India is that way blessed with a plethora of, uh, uh, you know, wildlife and fauna and flora. Uh, that you know, I was just talking to a person who specialized in macro photography. He said you would need three or four lifetimes to document just the macro subjects that are available in the uh, uh, in the, in in the country itself. So uh, you know this is a, a gray-headed uh, fishing eagle, and uh, this was a, a shot in Badra, and uh, this this eagle was finding it so hard because it has got a very big fish and it could not lift off itself, so it was just going up and coming down and going up and coming down and uh, you know I happened to you know be in the boat at that point of time and this was shot in the boat so these are these are things that I can tell you I can tell stories I can tell share these wonderful uh, you know experiences with people because I'm able to show this image and show and tell uh, people about what it is so I also do some children uh, uh, you know workshop on uh, awareness of birds in our area and I use photography to explain to them what are the different birds that are available and I showcase them. And, and then we go for a bird walk in the other one of the lakes and they're very small kids, you know, very young kids. And they're so sharp that because the previous day we were able to show these photographs, they're able to recollect uh, all these birds like this saying that, ah, oh, this is an, you know, um, Asian uh, quail, uh, uh, or this is a, you know, rose ring parakeet, you know, because it's so it's quick and fast that, you know, it's also good for education that you can use uh, photography uh, uh, as, as, as a tool to educate people about what is around us. And, and, and these are things we can do from our home. This, this, this bird was, you know, um, a red whiskered uh, bulbul, uh, shot from my terrace. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so beautiful to just uh, observe these birds come and they make a lot, they sing, they're very great singers. And you watch them, and uh, you know you just you don't need some fancy cameras. You can just use a simple uh, you know uh, lens to capture these uh, some of these uh, uh, these uh, birds. And this can be shot from your uh, from from your terrace. And and you know when when you want to really see the details, right? Uh, that's where you get to study. You know sometimes when you see these birds, you never get to see them up close like this. And that's that's the beauty of photography. That you can you can you can zoom up and see every feather and see every detail and uh, you know see this wonderful hairstyle this uh, particular uh, uh, bird has maybe a lot of us were inspired uh, with our hairstyle with this particular uh, bird and uh, there are a lot of these common birds but they make some wonderful pictures this is a, a common minor and is there everywhere almost every uh, you know garden every tree you will find these these birds but again they make such uh, lovely images so those of you who want to take a bird photography just a tip for you on board of bird photography this was taken lying full flat on the ground so uh, you know it's always good to get the, into the subject at the eye level 
so don't uh, feel bad to get your dress dirty or your you know, saying that oh my god you know i'm going my dress is going to get dirty and all that all that is is secondary you can always wash your the thing but this moment is not going to come again and uh, you know just look at look at how beautiful the uh, eyes are and, and the color combination and and this is such a common bird you know and you start appreciating uh, these uh, uh, you know um, uh, these small little nuances you know, life is beautiful you feel joy when right? talk about you know joy of photography what do you mean by joy of photography you start appreciating the little things in life and and you start appreciating the little things in life when you start noticing it and you start noticing it when you start photographing it you know so it's it's a kind of zen i feel you know it's kind of meditation when you are there with your camera and you're looking for these uh, uh, you know subjects and you you come back and you see this image i've seen this image a hundred times a ton of time but i it 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 it's not a great uh, image it's not a you know some something spectacular there but it it is a it, it is in, the, in for the life of the miner it's it's got an insect it's having its breakfast there and 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 it's it's a moment and it was it was just again there for a second and i was there at that time in the right place at the right time that's that's about photography you know you need to be right place right time and if you know if you have your techniques honed uh, you you have your images you have your pictures uh some of you may remember this uh this image so let me try to you know make it a little interactive because i've been talking for a long time uh how many of you uh know uh, about this event that happened it was a significant event in bangalore and uh, so those of you who are from bangalore can probably tell me on chat you know what do you think this uh, uh event uh, uh represents anybody would like to use the chat and Yes, so Mithun has already revealed the answer there. It's uh, the um, Hebal flyover, and uh, you know they were planning to axe around 550 trees along the line of uh, Hebal, and uh, you know there, there were people standing and making a human chain, and this family was there, and you know I said, hey, uh, you know how, what do you think about uh, you know the tree being cut? And immediately the little boy went and hugged the tree. and uh, you know i think his another a friend of his he also hugged the tree and it was just a moment and it was such a beautiful moment you know the child saying that lay i don't want this trees to be cut and i shared this uh, in the my own campaign with my social media i used this image to campaign saying that you know let's let's not cut trees and let's uh, save the environment so you you can you can uh, you know uh, you can do a lot with your photography it's important to you know have the proper technique for example this is a you know bird with a backlit and uh, you know and and if you really you know trying to see okay how can i focus because it's this is a microsecond this is an image is a microsecond the uh, the bird's wings are open there's a backlight there's a rim light on the on the bird and and if you see the the details there right you can see the see the beautiful light on the bird there you know the the wings the light on the wings so um is just there for a moment and if you don't have your technique right in terms of your aperture your shutter speed and your focus and whatever it is uh, it, it's it's not possible for you so a lot of times people you know try to skip the fundamentals and try and you know get into the act of it so it's very important that um uh you know yeah, it's it's important that you could uh, um um sanisha uh, you keep the chat open if somebody wants to ask a question all right uh, they could they could just uh, you know i'll we'll make it interactive so it's it's all right if they if the chat is on you know so let's let let it go on i i i don't think it really uh, matters it's not hampering me so yeah so thank you so much yeah so so um uh yeah so, so guys participate if you want to share something on and you want to comment something yeah, so you go ahead and let's let's make it interactive all right so uh here uh, mithun of course you can make a list of quick q and a's and then we can answer that but if there's something that i see and i and i would like to comment i will i will take it up okay yeah so so yeah so i i think it's very important to get your technique right and that's important and and then i i feel that people should shoot a lot i think they should go out and get your camera out i mean the camera and you should have muscle memory i mean you shouldn't go into the field and say okay okay where's my where's this button or what do i do and and how do i how do i how do i you know uh, change my iso in this camera 
I mean, you and your camera should be in 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 line. Uh, uh, line should, should be connected with your camera. So, and that means that you have to shoot uh, quite often. So, uh, I I don't uh, you know uh, never give up an opportunity to take my camera and go out and shoot. And and I and I think I've got around around 10, 15 hard disks of images filled up with uh, you know. Uh, the thing that that it is it's it's uh, I, I I constantly need uh, more hard disks to store my images because I'm always shooting. So to photograph is to hold one's breath when all faculties converge to capture fleeting reality. It's at that precise moment that mastering an image becomes a great physical and intellectual joy. Is by the famous Henri Cartier Bresson. So. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you see some things which are, you know, not very pleasant, but, uh, but these are, these are, uh, these, these are somewhat, some wonderful uh, moments in, in the, in, in, in the life of these animals, you know, this is a, this is a pregnant leopard in Masai Mara, and it had uh, caught this uh, impala, but it could not uh, eat, uh, take it up the tree because the leopards normally, they, they take the, uh, you know, Impala up the uh, tree that this one could not, uh, and it had left it hid it hidden it amongst the bushes and went and climbed the tree, right? So, uh, you know, these are some some pictures that that uh, uh, that also tell us what's happening. So normally, I when I go and show these pictures to children, I ask them, do you know what is what is what is this uh, uh, what is this uh, lion doing? Everybody saying the lion is uh, scratching the tree. No, but actually, this is this is called marking the territory. It, it's it's uh, what the male lion does in the morning. It growls, and this growl can be heard for ten kilometers. And there's so much to learn. So I th I think one of the things about uh, photography is that you you observe. And and I wouldn't have been in the forest department by photography. I was keen to take a picture of the lion. But as I was wanting to take a picture of the lion, this is in the Gir Forest. What was very intriguing for me is figure out why is the lion growling in the morning and why is it scratching the tree? Or why is it urinating on this tree? You know, so there's a lot of questions and ask around and you learn. So that's a great way to learn, All right? So, you know, so you make these images and, and, and then, you know, you, you are also able to show it to the world that this is this beautiful animal exists in this, uh, this part of the world. And uh, yeah, so you feel joyful about all this. Okay, so quiz for you. All right, so um, where was this uh, picture taken? All right, so um, most of you are travel photographers. You will know this, know this picture. Yeah, answers are already coming in, Shankar. Yeah, I can see that. So just want to, <clears throat> sorry, uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, any questions for Shankar. Uh, respect to photography, please put it onto the Q and A box so that we can collate. Uh, but yeah, I mean these kind of questions, uh, please do answer on the chat. All right. Okay. So so we got a lot of people uh, saying Nandgaon and Barsana. Yeah, this is the twin villages of uh, Nandgaon and Barsana where this photograph was taken, and this is the Latmar Holi, and it's it's a, it's it's a it's a wonderful spectacle. And if you want to if you want to celebrate Holi. You need to be in Rajasthan, you need to be in UP, Mathura, Vrindavan, uh, Nandagao, Barsana, these are the places. And there really is the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I've lived in India for such a long time. And it's the first time that I ever knew that a place like this exists. And, and I, I, was, I was completely bowled over by the, by the spirit of the scholars and the, and the faith and the energy. And this was fantastic, you know. I mean, it's it's a once in a lifetime for me. I wanted to go there again, but you know, I couldn't. I couldn't make it. I'd love to uh, visit this, uh, uh, you know, beautiful scene uh, once again. Even though it's a lot of hardship, and uh, you know, it's not easy uh, as a as a photographer to to do the shoot. And um, Satyendra has captured a similar picture. Yeah, so he knows about it. It's not an easy picture to capture. Uh, but it's 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 a wonderful wonderful event uh, for you to see, and it's a recently concluded uh, you know Dasara, and uh, you know the Mysore Palace you know all lit up and everything and and really a beautiful joy to see this palace lit up again. 
so all these things you know you 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 want to go to these places you want to take these pictures but as you as you uh, you know take take these images um uh, you know you 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 capture these images and you see the joy and and you know this dasra is over but then you come back and look at these memories and say ha i was there for this thing and then you have a lot of memories and emotions that come in every time you uh, i call this as emotional metadata right so every picture has got metadata but you have emotional metadata also so when you see that made pictures so the same emotions you know come up and uh, uh this is an image that i shot for uh, ngo and um and uh, i i have used this image uh, the series of images of for an ngo uh, about um, you know uh, economic development for minority women and this project was done by an ngo called ifes and this this all these uh, pictures were published in a book called seher and uh, this was one of my first uh, you know uh, pictures that were uh, published in a book and i uh, my pictures were published in a couple of uh, books after that as well a good photograph is one that communicates a fact touches the heart and leaves the viewer a changed person for having seen it it's in a word very factor so this is the tayam which happens in the the north uh, of kerala and uh, the belt of bangalore and cook and uh, you know i i can do a presentation one hour presentation on this tayam event uh, itself and uh, it's 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 again uh, this this uh, uh, this happens around 3 am or 4 am in the morning and you have to stay awake the whole night for for this for this event to take place and and you have to be in the right place and you have to you know you know what's happening then you go into the history that way you'll also learn that uh, you know about the country a lot about our country the diversity that our country has got uh, unfortunately many of us really do not travel that much and we know very little about our country Steve Macquarie, who's been traveling to India for since maybe the last forty years or more, has told that you know he's he's one of the you know people who have captured India left, right, and center. It's iconic images, and he says that he has only scratched the surface by getting five percent of what he could actually do. And there's so much we can do. And I I kind of you know I wish I could travel more. I don't have to go anywhere outside the country itself. There's so much. one can um, one can do uh, in uh, in within 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 india right so uh, mithun i think you are there in this image uh, uh, you are uh, i think uh, on I was, the uh, i think 1 2 3 4th are you in fourth. the center are you yes 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 uh, you are there in the center so uh, we've we've been on uh, many tours together with uh, friends uh, and uh, you know when you travel uh, together and uh, you know there's there's also a lot of camaraderie with people and i've made so many different friends uh, through through my photography uh, i used to lead uh, uh, photo tours with data photography and they do some fantastic tours i uh, you know mithun has uh, uh, joined me in one of those tours i think a couple of tours and uh, we've had a a lot of fun we learn we we share uh, we we critique each other's images and we we uh, you know learn in the process so i think that's another thing that you know you, you could uh, uh, look at uh, you know getting to small groups and you know traveling and, and maybe you know uh, you know five six of you can get together and and make a small group and start traveling that's it's it in some ways it's also a lot of fun and you also get to share a lot of expenses of the you know transportation and all those things as well so it's 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 great that you meet such wonderful people i have met so many friends uh, through my uh, uh, photography that i'm really really happy that i made such such wonderful uh, people and wonderful connects over the years so when people look at my pictures i want them to feel the way they do when they want to read a line of poem twice yeah so yeah, i i i feel that you know every picture that i i i shoot uh, has got, has got something to talk uh, and or maybe a, you know you feel like a poem by itself and 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 i like to create such such images as we as we go along so these are some images that i'm sharing with you a great photograph is full of expression of what one feels about what is being photographed in the deepest sense and is thereby 
a true expression of one feels about life in its entirety by the great photographer Ansel Adams. So I'm sure we do a lot of these fun things that we do on the, our tours, we, you know, and, and that's all these things are, 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 are fun. And of course, today, everybody's a photographer. We have our mobile phones and uh, you do some, can do some great work with your mobile phones itself. Uh, I uh, taught uh, two kids uh, very recently, a one-on-one -on -one coaching session I did. Uh, for two kids, uh, one was uh, I think uh, twelve years old, another one was was ten years old, and uh, their mom was so happy that for the last three months they've been sending me images of what the children have taken, and they have seen uh, you know a world of a difference before uh, the instruction and after the instruction. That the kids were so quick to grasp this thing. So I think once you learn the fundamentals, it doesn't matter. You know, of course, everything has got its limitations, but you can also do some great work with, uh, with, with mobile phones as well. Photographs open doors into the past, but they also allow a look into the future. So uh, at this point of time, I also like to make an announcement uh, here. This Mithun is a good time for me to make the announcement. Yeah, yeah we can, we can, I'll come so good. So uh, we have this, uh, um, this, uh, you know, those of you who'd like to participate, uh, have their uh, pictures exhibited in, a, in an exhibition. Uh, we are having uh, one uh, exhibition on the 11th, 12th and 13th of November in uh, Bangalore in Chitrakala Parishad. And this is an aid of the Multiple Sclerosis uh, Society and the funds raised will be, uh, you know, uh, will be uh, given to them. Actually, today is the last day, but as a special uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you say, gesture, I would like to extend this up till Monday night. Up till Monday night, we're extending the registration. I request, uh, uh, you know, Honeycomb to please share the link to register. So the way it goes is that uh, there's a final rupees registration fee for to participate in this, which is used for the operational expenses. And then once you register, you'll be given a link and you can upload up to 10 images there. And you can also indicate how many images you're willing to contribute. We got a, uh, we got a sponsorship from Felix Coela, where we were able to cut the printing cost and framing cost to almost 50%. So each print is, is coming to 1,000 rupees. Now, this is how much you would pay even if you were to go and, uh, you know, you'd pay a little more if you were to go and print it here. So this print will be sold to the public and the money raised will be used to the uh, to uh, provide uh, uh, for the multiple sclerosis society it'll go into the charity and we've been doing this exhibition jagachitra for the last uh, i think uh, since 2000 i think this is the this is the eighth uh, version uh, here and uh, uh, we have raised uh, every year close to around 7 lakhs of rupees uh, for charity 5 to 7 lakhs of rupees so what you need to do is that, uh, let's say that your image was selected, you will have to pay 1000 rupees to Honeycomb and they will print it and they will ensure that it's framed and sent to the gallery. The gallery, your print will be exhibited. And now in, the, in case the print is sold, that money will go to the Multiple Sclerosis Society. In case it is not sold, it will come back to you. You can take back the print. So it's a win-win-win proposition. So, um, uh, you know, first of all, uh, you get an opportunity to... Uh, to take part. The theme is Indian culture. So when you talk about culture, we talk about uh, temples, festivals, um, clothing, dressing, portraits, um, you know, dances, uh, you know, anything, uh, anything that, that, that depicts the culture of our country. So the theme is culture. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can also uh, connect with Mithun. Uh, he will, uh, he will, you know, uh, uh, you know, help you understand a little bit more. Unfortunately, we only have a couple of days because we have a very tight deadline. And the last day to submit the images is twentieth of uh, um, October. Uh, once you are registered, then you have got time up till twentieth October to submit images. Only thing you just have to register for the final rupees, the registration fee, and you can submit even uh, four to five images also if it is selected. And each image, you have to pay 1,000 rupees. You will get a 12 by 18 print. 
this will be exhibited there and if it will be sold if it is sold then you don't get any image but if it is not uh, uh, sold uh, uh, if you can take back the image uh, for yourself mithun have i covered everything or is there anything that i have missed out no no you have covered everything i think uh, some of the folks are getting uh, registration uh, error so we'll we'll correct that uh, don't worry about it uh, but please uh, bookmark the the link uh, that is already shared by shri kumar in the chat uh plus um, you know i would strongly uh, recommend everybody register because it's a chitrakala parishad is a very very prestigious uh, gallery uh, in karnataka as well as across india uh, and uh, uh, at least to me it's a matter of honor and pride if my picture goes there and uh, stays uh, and plus it's for charity so i think uh, we are doing uh, everything right uh, with this so please do participate in large numbers thank you right thank you thank you mithun so the uh, next thing uh, about uh, photography is that those of you are you know i saw that some of you are yet to uh, start this hobby uh, it's a, it's a, it's a hobby which which you can do uh, there's no age limit and you can you can go on doing photography uh, we've had people who were you know 65 70 who joined workshops at at 60 65 to uh, do that of course a little bit of knowledge of the um the knowledge of uh, uh photography will be definitely uh, uh useful in terms of creating these images and also knowledge of computer uh, is always there because today most of the uh, photography happens digitally and uh, uh, therefore a reasonable knowledge of computers and uh, thing and i'm sure we can all pick up the skill so uh, whenever your brain is involved in in something it it is as always sharp for the brain to uh, you know uh, uh, for the brain to be constantly involved in thinking and being creative is a, is a great way to keep the brain engaged and for your own mental health and for your brain health it's a good idea for you to keep learning new things photography is one of them but you can learn new things as well but photography is a great way because you are constantly i i have 20 years i think i'm still learning every day i feel there's every time i look at uh, the ocean of knowledge available in photography i think i know i know so little about photography all right i still think there is so much to learn about photography so you're always constantly learning so that's an opportunity and this is one art where you can never say i have i am an expert so sorry folks for those of you who said you're experts you are experts definitely i respect you but even experts have to learn so when you go to a place like this you know sometimes you are you are you're perplexed where do i stand how do i take this image where do i how do i compose so you're always uh, you're always thinking there's a, there's always there's always something that you are you're on your feet and you're trying to make those images is this the right time for me to make this image uh, so it's 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 always um, a thinking game as far as photography is uh, there yeah this is from humpy you're right uh, uh, so any um this is a dance photography i do a lot of dance photography because i learned uh, indian classical dance i learned bharatanatyam for 8 years so i kind of you know really uh, relate with photography uh, with uh, dance and uh, when you go to the dance thing again there's a lot of uh, thinking to do you know anticipation uh, you know what is happening here and um, how do i compose because the light is constantly changing this so dynamic it's it's uh, a very dynamic environment and then you have to constantly think on your feet there right so again some more pictures uh, from holy and 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 mind you you know we were 25 of us in this uh, in this group and this particular image is one of my most highly sold images and only two of us in our group got this image because you know for some reason i decided that i don't want to be with the group i just walk around and 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 then kind of look at anticipate this image as stood in one place i didn't know what was happening but i was just plain lucky i would say to get this wonderful image with action yeah so there were only two of us in a group of 30 30 photographers who were in the same place only two of us got an image which is like this so you constantly thinking you know what's this exposure what's this what's happening here this is a, a picture which you shot in hornbill and all these this is called a morong and everybody is uh, standing in the morong during the breaks when they're not performing in the arena and all of them were facing uh, you know inside and they were you know they are warming themselves up in the fire and they are talking and i just stood there and waited for some time i was hoping that uh, 
that that something would happen and somebody said i or something like that and they all turned back and it was just a split second i got this beautiful image right otherwise i would have just got their backs uh, in this particular image so uh, this is from the kumbh mela this beautiful image i think of photography like therapy so i i i feel that whenever i'm having my camera it's good for my mental health i really feel uh, joyful and in bliss yeah so i'm blessed uh, here is a nice thinking again a thinking photograph uh, i uh, i got an award for this uh, uh, photograph uh, it said uh, the title was where are the flowers and it was an environment uh, to be, uh, you know section of the photography competition right i told you also that uh, health and fitness is another area that uh, there uh, so why health and fitness because if you really want to go to these you know places first of all you you have to be physically fit you know because you'll have to take your camera you have to take your tripod you know this is a, for those of you uh, who are new uh, to photography this is uh, shot at a slow shutter speed so that you know you can get this milky feel you can see the milky feel to the uh, uh, to the whole waterfall and therefore you need a tripod and it's it may, you need to understand the technique of course but it because it's a slow shutter speed you need to put a tripod so you need to carry the tripod you need to carry your camera well if somebody is there to help you fine but you need to lug all these things so if you're not really physically fit you can't really uh, uh, you know uh, get around to all these places so i think one of the motivation to stay fit for me you know is that oh if i have to travel i have to carry my camera 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 bag tripod all these equipment so i have to really be fit so i need to exercise myself i need to work i know we all know that exercise is good for the health but we need some motivation i think photography is a great motivation for us to you know uh, be healthy and fit so the world moves fast changing everything around us with each new day photography is a gift that can keep us in a moment forever blissfully eternal so this was a, a you know trip that i did along with uh, torus uh, you know uh, captain suresh sharma and we traveled from kashmir to leh on an aishar truck which was uh, modified as a caravan and there were eight of us it was a, it was it was a hard trip because we had to sleep in the tents and uh, we had to travel and uh, you know in the in these trucks uh, through these mountainous terrain but believe me it was such a fabulous experience man i would you know there's very less oxygen and if you're going to lay la lak in these places if you're not really fit you can you can have I've, i've known of people actually dying because uh, they, they were not fit so and and you have to know the you have to you have to uh, know the uh, you know place Uh, follow the rules and regulations. A lot of people there who are who are not new to these mountain areas, they try to go and do a lot of adventure, and then we uh, we've lost a lot of young lives because they are not not really uh, you know knowing what to do in these in these places. So yeah, so the physical fitness is the key uh, component if you want to trek, if you want to travel, if you want to. rough it out in these places because many of these places especially landscape photographers is not easy life at all you'll have to climb mountains climb uh, uh, rough surfaces rough patches and those of you who do night uh, star trails and all of them may have to stay stay up late in the night and it's uh, uh, you know uh, very cold uh, regions so i think physical fitness is uh, something really really important to be able to go and take such images and come back and show it uh, to the world at the end of the day So these are some images from the Leh Ladakh trip that I did. And I've really it was a it's a beautiful thing. I mean this place Angkor uh, Wat um uh, Bayon Temple and uh, the Angkor Wat complex in Cambodia. Uh, why I'm sharing this again in the health and fitness is that it is such a humid place that you know you just walk for just say uh, maybe just 1 km and you are drenched in sweat it is so hot and so humid and it's so tiring and you're so fatigued by the end of the day and you know so so you'll have to be really really uh, fit to uh, walk around with your camera um, carry your lug your camera walk in the heat and 
and go to these places because everywhere you need to walk, 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 and you, you can't, you can't uh, really have uh, the luxury of going everywhere in a vehicle. So these are some uh, images. And this this temple is very famous uh, after uh, Angelina Jolie's uh, uh, Tomb Raider movie came and popularized this particular place. So this is us pictures from Cambodia. Of course, there's a, a lot of creativity that uh, you could uh, you know do with uh, you could you could you could work with your uh, images. Um, if it's, it's a portraiture, um, fashion work, um, the, so so with 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 with, with each uh, image as you see, you can you know you are constantly thinking. Those of you done studio work, you probably uh, know what I'm talking about. Is that is that you're constantly thinking um, uh, about uh, you know uh, what to light, how to light. Uh, what's the makeup? Uh, you know, you're working with a team of people. You're working, you're working with a makeup artist. You're working with uh, the fashion designer. You're working with a model. Uh, you're working on the pose. You're working. Uh, you know, so so every time I'm I'm in the studio doing these uh, studio pictures, it's it's the mind is constantly thinking. The mind is you know working, uh, saying that you know what is the what is what what how should I like this. What should I do? What should be the next image? How can I make a different, different image? Oh, what's the kind of creativity that I can bring in? How can I, um, uh, you know, how can I uh, create a, a magical image uh, for this person so that they could use it for whatever purposes they have? So yeah, well, learning the technique is fine, but once you learn the techniques, you also need to uh, see how do I, how do I play around? How do I process my images? Uh, how do I get that arty feel uh, to the images? A great photograph is one that fully expresses what one feels in the deepest sense about what is being photographed. The art of photography is all about directing the attention of the viewer to what is there. Now you look at this uh, in, in this image. It, if you really see this, would this is not how you see the naked eye. It'll be it'll be there among a lot of flowers in the garden and. What you do as a photograph is that you bring the viewer to that particular part that was really exciting for you, right? So that's what you do. It could be a simple, uh, simple leaf, a dried leaf like this, and, and you see beauty in, in that. All right, so those of you who like flowers and floral pictures, yeah, there's always something to do in your gardens. You don't have to go very far. But if you gain low how to how to shoot images, also you can make some really creative images. This is a color pipe from Kerala. Some macro work. So this is from a uh, island called Majuli in Assam. This is a, a, a image of a dancer getting ready. And I was trying to take a picture, but what happened was behind, there was a, a young boy dressed up in the Yakshagana dress and he was looking through the mirror as well. And I thought this, this made a very nice image. And this just happened, this, this whole, whole creativity and the contrast that came in it was just, just beautiful. It's a very popular image of mine. Yeah, so I also do sometimes uh, weddings for friends of mine. And uh, again, the wedding is a great opportunity to try and uh, do a lot of creative images and to, you know, uh, bring in your creativity and thinking and saying that how can I take these images and show the, uh, show the moment in a, in a very sensitive way, right? And how do I capture these little moments where I can bring in emotion and show this, show the, delicate emotions there, right? This is an Yakshagana artist getting ready. There's a very famous Yakshagana artist by the name of Shivanand Hegde. All right. So this is a very nice image of mine. This is, a, this is what I do. Travel photography is my genre of work that I do. And it's a very ironic uh, picture here. 
Uh, okay, so it's just a small time to interact as well. What what do you see is the irony in this image? What what do you see is the irony in this image? Use the chat to let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So yeah, so that's that's where photography is going because I think mobile photography is taking over, and <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, this boy is basically making a living taking photographs of people who come and come to this the Pushkar Mela, and people come and wear these dresses and take images, and these people used to sell these photographs and make money, uh, and at this. One end, you know, you see a lot of joy in the uh, in the uh, you know selfies, uh, but you see a lot of disappointment in the boy there. Yeah, so yeah, so that's some of my travel pictures. This is from Scotland. Uh, a beautiful uh, evening. One thing about shooting uh, in UK and Scotland is that we go in the summers. Uh, you can shoot right up to 7, 8 p.m. and, uh, you know, the sun sets pretty late and you've got a large window of time to do photography. My life, life is shaped by urgent need to wander and observe and my camera is my passport by the famous Steve McCovey. This is again from the Pushkar Mela. So you can see a lot of my work in uh, this place called Ushankar.in and... Uh, uh, this is again one of my highly awarded uh, pictures and highly sold images. There's one hanging in Nofil's, uh, uh, you know, in the in his office, and I think Sri Kumar can say that this this is I think uh, sold the maximum number of images in uh, along with my holy picture, uh, which has been sold. Yes, and, and this particular image, you know, I took around four to five days to really figure out. Um, uh, where the camels are coming from and there's the dust which is being raised and there's the sun is opposite side. And I went back four years later to try and you know, make the same image. But unfortunately, development has happened and the road, camels are now coming by road. And this picture is now worth a lot more because you cannot get this image in Pushkar now because the camels are now coming by road and there's no dust and there's no trauma and all that is gone. Not in this place, maybe somebody somewhere else you need to find where they're coming through the sand and try to pick, uh, take this picture. So actually this has got a nice story because for three to four uh, days, I was trying to wander around to figure out where these camels are coming from. But I was getting distracted on the way because I would find some nice portraits and take these portraits. And by the time I go, it will already be 7 a.m. And even though I start at 5 a.m., by 7 a.m., this all the drama is over. So on the fourth day, I decided I'm going to just be blind. I'm not going to go here or there. I'm just going to walk towards the spot. And I was there at 6 a.m. And the camels who are, the camels are taken out for grazing around 3 a.m. And the camel herders bring them back around 6.30, between 6.30 and 7. And if you're not there during that time, you will miss this particular shot. And uh, this is one of my, you know, uh, really, really, you know, amazing uh, experiences and and I and I, I whomever I have shown this image. Uh, I, one of my, the, this image was sold at an auction for Rotary for thirty thousand rupees. Yeah, so uh, I'm very very happy that uh, that person saw value in this particular image. Right, uh, so we are in the seven forty uh, thing, and I've been meandering around and talking. And non-stop for quite some time or most an hour. So is it time that we take up some Q&A and, and have an interactive experience and maybe I can stop my monologue? Yeah, so I think, uh, Shankar, let's uh, maybe another two, three minutes uh, if you can just wrap up and then uh, uh, we will have an, we have around 22 questions. So I will take up all the questions. Uh, don't worry, folks. So please, please put in your questions into the Q&A box. Questions. All right. Okay. Yeah, so don't so worry. Let me just it. share some of the uh, images uh, there, you know, uh, some more some more images yeah. i don't know if you're able to see this uh, the beauty of these things but i'll tell you the beauty of this is when you make a honeycomb print 
and a big, large print, right? That's when you see the beauty of this, uh, the, these images. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, Honeycomb is one of the printers, but if you are not able to reach Honeycomb, wherever you are, if you're able to, uh, you know, go to this thing and, you know, printing again is another art, the different types of paper, the different types of uh, inks, the different types of printing and some, play, some people, you know, they try to uh, go to the cheapest print available and you don't really get the gamut of colors that uh, uh, like a, a printer, like an Epson printer that Honeycomb uses, you know, they use around, uh, I think, nine to 10 colors. And nine, uh, nine nine colors. colors, is it nine colors or 10 colors? It is nine. So, nine, nine colors. So uh, the, the different, uh, different shades come out very clearly when, uh, when, the, when the printer is able to render that, that, uh, uh, that that quality and the kind of paper that you choose and uh, this is uh, acid free paper and you don't it doesn't get dull even uh, you know i've got some of the prints which have, i printed 10 years ago and they have not yet faded uh, uh, you know so uh, i th i think uh, i think printing really plays a huge role and i think the joy of printing the images is, is really fabulous so i i think you know you should you guys you know i mean don't say don't think that I'm promoting Anicom. You can print wherever you want, but uh, Anicom does a good job. But do print and do print it on. Take you know over the next week at least. You should go and take your images and go to a nice printer and get your um, pictures printed and see them in print. You'll really enjoy them. And when these images are you know just blown up and seen these in prints. They're, you know, they, they just, they just look, I, mean, I can just keep looking at them, you know. Yeah, seeing them on screen is fine, but seeing them as print is totally, totally different. So these are some, uh, some images from Tayem. This is from, uh, this, this image is from uh, uh, the Arunpur Sahib, Holla Mola. Punjab. So I'm letting the pictures do some talking for some time. So I'm just, uh, uh, if you have a question on the on the picture I'm showing, you can just uh, ask me. This is in uh, Varanasi. Mysore doing Dasara. Kashmir. Uh, Greece. I wish that all of nature's magnificence, the emotion of the land, the living energy of place could be photographed. Greece again. Santorini. Greece. If you want to be a better photographer, stand in front of more interesting stuff. Jim Richardson. <laughs> 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 all right. I think I'll, I'll, I'll close it here. So... I'll just wind up by saying that uh, travel photography is about knowing where to go, you know, what to shoot, where to stand, and when to shoot. So these are the four questions I always tell about travel photography. And but you know, figuring this out is itself a lot of research, right? So over to you, um, Mithun. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so Shankar, uh, the first question from Surya. Um, the question is, uh, what are the important criteria to be taken while doing portrait photography? Well, for that we need to run a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, it all depends on uh, you know whether uh, you are doing a you know available light photography or you want to do a studio photography. Uh, knowledge of light, I think, is 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 the key here, and how light uh, falls on the subject. Where is the light coming from? What is the light doing to the subject? Uh, so let me just give you a simple example here. Let's say that if I want to take uh, Mithun's uh, uh, photograph and I want to do a portrait of Mithun, one thing that all the people who say, you know, that when they come to the photographer is, please make me look good, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So however, you know, that, uh, you know, if you are thin or, you know, you're, you want to look a little, more uh, larger because you look you want to look a little bigger so the thin people want to look a little bigger a little, little bit rounder 
people who are a little larger they want to look a little thinner so so they want to they want to show what they their best side in the, in the photograph and they want to hide their flaws so one of the things you have to know is that you know if, if somebody who's got a perfect face and a perfect uh, let's say uh, a body structure and uh, everything is is perfect uh, you really don't have much of a hassle there because you know you can pose at any time but if you really want to uh, you know pose somebody who uh, wants to uh, hide some flaw of theirs you know which they think is a flaw all right uh, and uh, uh, then then that requires a lot of uh, you know your knowledge of photography and lighting and how in which 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 angle you're going to be shooting how are you going to make them so there's posing there is there's lighting there is uh, um, uh, the photography techniques all these things there is comes into play so i i think we'll have to run a you know complete workshop on portraiture if you really want to make some nice images so if you've not done a workshop already i'd encourage you to uh, do a workshop on uh, portrait photography absolutely thanks uh, shankar so there's a question from manish uh, on uh, any kind of tips for a razor uh, sharp picture and focus yeah so one thing is that uh, you know uh, why do you say i would i would answer it in another way why do you get blood, blood images right so why do you get blood images is one is that there's a camera shake uh, or it was a low shutter speed right so one of the things that you could uh, look at is to see how do you keep your 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 camera stable and how you're holding the camera you know a lot of i see a lot of people holding the camera like this and and it's your elbows are uh, far away from your body and you know just a simple thing of you know just holding your um, you know elbows closer to your body it just it and you're resting your camera here and you're shooting you know you are you are getting that much support that it itself will stop the camera shake and of course if you watch your shutter speed and uh, right that's that's one thing and the second one is that you know where are you where are you focusing uh, and what kind of focusing are you using uh, center focusing are you using uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, you know spots focusing so what kind of focusing are are you using so all these things uh, uh, play so for example if you are having a moving object uh, and you are focusing how would you be focusing so um, you you need to look at all these different aspects to be making sure that you get a sharp image so one is that you have to choose your shooting mode your focusing uh, uh, mode uh, and you have to show whether it's a continuous fo focus or one shot uh, what is it our ai uh, continuous focus so what is the focusing mode you're going to be uh, using and uh, what shutter speed are you using and how stable are your hands so you're going to use a tripod are you going to use your body to support it are you going to lean against a tree and then or a building to support yourself these are all things that you could ensure to see that you get a sharp image and of course some of the lenses uh, give you more sharp images uh, again up aperture what aperture you are shooting and where you're focusing that also for example if you want everything sharp in terms of and uh, you want a greater depth of field uh, you want an f8 f11 uh, f14 uh, depth of field uh, if you want uh, shallower depth of field you want f2.8 f4 then again uh, when you use a shallower depth of field if you focus on the eye the ear can go out of focus so you need to know where to again focus there right uh, there's a question from tushar uh, on uh, photography means as it uh, as it, as it is a photograph or is it also include editing do you do editing as well obviously even uh, people who were shooting in the uh, monochrome uh, black and white film days they did editing and uh, whatever we are doing in photoshop these days are an element of what used to be happening or replicating what happens in the dark room so we are not doing anything there was burning there was dodging there was uh, uh controlling the exposure these are all things that we do but then again it depends what kind of uh, you know photograph you're doing for example there are, there is a there is a element of composite images people do composite images for example today if you see advertising advertisement photography it's always composite images there's no there's no one image there this photography is maybe 30 40% there's a lot of editing which happens uh, so advertising photography is a lot of uh, you know putting different elements together 
So I think we need to know what is it that, for example, if you're if you're shooting, uh, you're doing photojournalism, right? And then you're trying to tamper with the image, you're trying to crop, you're going to remove some component there, then that is not really ethically correct. If you're doing nature photography and you're trying to tamper with things in the, in the, in the image there, that's not depicting what it is, right? So it all depends on the, I think your question is more about the ethics of, uh, of editing. And there, I think you, it, it depends on what is the image at the end of the day, what is the context in which we are discussing here. So if you're doing some, some, some uh, for example, portrait work, and then somebody has a scar or somebody has you know, blemishes on the skin, it's a natural process that we use uh, the healing brush and uh, a skin smoothing to smoothen the skin. It's a, it's, it's, it's a given in fashion photography. There's no, there's no fashion photography. 50% of the photography happens uh, in the camera, 50% happens on the editing table. So uh, it depends on what kind of uh, uh, you know, photographs that we are, we are shooting and what is the editing doing and what is it that we're trying to do. If you're trying to fool the people, then, then obviously, what is it that you're trying to fool the people, right? Okay. Right. I think uh, there are, uh, I, I will probably want to consolidate uh, these questions because there are a lot of questions, uh, Shankar, on uh, should we use mirrorless or DSLR? Is DSLR market getting killed by the mirrorless? So I think uh, if you can answer them in one shot. So I have this thing. So if you're going to buy a new camera and you don't have a DSLR already, right, and you have a big budget, then uh, yeah, you can go straight away for a mirrorless because most of the camera companies are, are going to stop manufacturing. I heard they're going to stop manufacturing DSLRs. If you already have a DSLR, I would still like, uh, you know, encourage you to explore the uh, potential of the DSLR because another three, four years, five years, I think as long as you can get spares, you can still keep doing it. I, I have still not shifted to mirrorless, so I'm very happy with my full frame uh, DSLRs that I use. And I think you, I encourage you to, uh, you know, continue to use uh, whatever you're using. It's, it's, I always say, it's not the camera, it's the person behind the camera. So I would, I would say that that's, that's an important thing. Having said this, if you have a, a good, uh, what do you say, uh, a good, uh, what do you say, uh, equipment, uh, uh, reasonably good equipment, you will, uh, which, is, which is suitable for that. You, you can also get great images from a, uh, entry level cameras as well. But if you're doing special, for example, if you're doing a lot of low light photography, then you will need a, a you know, full frame camera to, uh, to be able to do that uh, low light images uh, at the end of the day. So yeah, so that's, that's what I would suggest is that uh, you try to exploit what you have. Don't be on the uh, gear acquisition drive, you know, a lot of people buy a lot of uh, gear and because somebody keeps gear guiding them, hey, you know, Nikon is better than Canon and Canon is better than Sony, Sony is better than Nikon, you know, so everybody gives you on this thing and then you just, you just hope that another better equipment will make better uh, images, no, it's, it's a better technique, better uh, fundamentals, uh, more travel, more shooting, more understanding of photography is going to give you more better images at the end of the day. Right. Uh, I think uh, uh, there, there, was a, there was a question from Steve. Uh, he wanted me to specifically take this up with you, Shankar. Uh, so he said that uh, he used to do photography as a side hustle some time back. And then he had, uh, unfortunately, a heart surgery in 2020. Then he could not continue. And now that he's recovered, he wanted to start his career back as a travel photographer like you and uh, wants to work with uh, leading travel magazines. Uh, he, he, he does write but he doesn't know how to write professionally for his work. He wants to know where to start, what kind of skills are required if you can guide. So I think it's very important that you start with, uh, with a blog, with Insta, with Facebook, with social media, and, uh, and, and then uh, try to you know, tag all these, uh, uh, the travel magazines and uh, grab their attention. And also keep writing to these uh, travel magazines, to the editor. And when you write, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, you can also, uh, if you are, if you're not really, uh, you know, adept at writing, you can always uh, speak to somebody who's good at writing and uh, ask ask them to help you to put the, the writing in place, and then create a set of images and uh, write to these travel magazines. 
and uh, they're quite encouraging. So they very, very soon if they see some great work, they are very encouraging and you can, can write to them. So there are these uh, airlines uh, which will feature, so you can write to all these airlines from their uh, tra travel, uh, you know, the airlines magazines they like to feature. Uh, and you can write internationally as well. So um, you can get these email IDs and uh, the editor's details on the web. And you just need to keep, uh, you know, writing to these people. And I'm sure, you know, they, they will be, you will find some success uh, getting to these people. Right. And uh, I just want to add Steve uh, here as well, because uh, what Shankar said was absolutely right, that uh, please do Instagram, use Instagram specifically do tag, uh, uh, you know, you try, 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 like they used to tell us in the school uh, until you succeed. So you definitely find success. Uh, I want to uh, just take a few seconds to explain my personal experience. So in last uh, one week itself, uh, I got, uh, you know, featured uh, with uh, Maggie India, uh, you know, the I'd put my picture of the Maggie uh, being eaten in the mountains uh, and uh, book my show, uh, which took my uh, Hyderabad uh, Chamina picture. So, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. I did not put anything apart from tagging and it, it just clicked. So I think uh, that's that's what uh, you should do. Uh, try to uh, take pictures, uh, you know, showcase the culture, city, food, whatever you want. And then I think uh, it will all work for you. Okay, hope, the, hope that answers for you, uh, Steve. Um, there's a question uh, which normally is the is the scary part for any photographer, Shankar, which is the backup uh, of photos. So there is a question from Rajneesh uh, that he works for an NGO. He does a lot of activities to capture photography of all activities. And uh, he backs up all the selected photo for his documentation. Uh, he's confused on the backup of photos for long use and uh, what, what kind of uh, solution would you recommend for long-term backup? Sorry, sorry, I didn't get, I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that part. The Last long term, time. long term solution for uh, backups. Oh, I see. This is a technical, technical question in terms of a backup of uh, images and all that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So there, I, I think Dr. Krishnamon has uh, shared a, a video link on YouTube. I think Mithun, maybe if you uh, can uh, share it with this uh, person. Sure, I sure. Think, I don't know, one hour session on. Uh, uh, backups and uh, so I think it was what is it two plus one or three plus one three plus one uh, three plus one is the formula I think that's what Dr. Krishnamon uh, well, had uh, talked right. about so Rajneesh uh, uh, just to uh, keep it short uh, uh, you can get in touch with me I, I will uh, let you know uh, the link but uh, uh, in short uh, you know whatever works for you uh, you know considering whatever uh, hard disks you have backups you have at least uh, two backups uh, for sure uh, in different places, uh, maybe on one on the cloud, one on the physical. So it all depends. Uh, but please use, uh, you know, because that's a dreaded question that most of the photographers have. What if I lose my memory card? What if I lose my camera? What if I, Shankar has experienced it once before of losing the entire Canon gear? So <laughs> he, he can he can be the best uh, person to answer this. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there is somebody who had asked a similar question on the mirrorless versus uh, this thing, but then that uh, Tejas uh, did say that he does. Automotive photography, which is very good. Uh, I think uh, he wanted to know which one we should select. I think the answer is the same, whatever works for you. Uh, I think the most important thing, Tejas, is not to invest heavily into anything because photography, although it's a good, great passion, but it's also expensive. So you should uh, look at various also, options. I mean, I really encourage everybody to also, you know, try out uh, gear by hiring them out. And, renting uh, it out. Renting it out and uh, hiring it out. and. Uh, and uh, uh, sorry, renting it out and then use it. And then if you like it and you see the quality of images, you're happy with it, you can go for it. Because today there are a lot of these uh, company, uh, camera rental companies, which are providing you uh, cameras and lenses. So instead of really, you know, buying, let's say five lakhs worth of equipment and then keeping it in your house for two years. And then later on, we want to sell them, they're worth two lakh rupees. So uh, you lost three lakh rupees and you've not even made uh, 10,000 rupees on your image. Right, so you might as well pay a thousand rupees or two thousand rupees a camera and hire it out, and and if you're going to make money, you know, the, you can write it off as expenses. So I'd encourage you to do that. Right, um, folks. I know that we are already over the time, five minutes, but I will just take another five more minutes so that we answer uh, as many questions we can. Just in case if we are not able to answer a few questions, we'll definitely get back to you, or you can get in touch with us. Uh, we'll have Shankar also respond to you, so don't worry about it. Uh, most of the questions, uh, some of the questions are related to mirrorless versus this. So we have already answered that. I'm not going to take that. 
uh, I think there was one question, Shankar, that I had seen on your bird image uh, that you had shown. Uh, how did you get the light behind the feathers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't put the light. <laughs> <laughs> No, Shiv, Shiv, Shivani had asked this question. It was a late, late sunset uh, uh, picture and uh, there was a lot of activity happening. I could see. Uh, I think there was a, some lake cleaning happening and there was, the water was being drained down. So the fishes were all there and there was a lot of bird activity there. And uh, I was just sitting there from, for more than 45 minutes trying images and I saw this, this birds flying and the sun was on the opposite direction. I was getting these rim lights and all those things and that's how I got that image. Yeah, it's on the opposite side. The sun is on the opposite side. Yeah. Right. Uh, there, there were questions again on uh, APSC versus full frame versus mirrorless. The answer remains the same. Whatever it is, uh, I think uh, one of them uh, very aptly responded back uh, on the chat that the eye matters uh, a lot, what you see, and the camera is uh, then becomes secondary. So I think uh, that is more important. So uh, please rent it out. Please uh, do whatever lenses you want, uh, but uh, first try it out and then only go first out. I think there's a question from Saurabh on what lens uh, is good for astrophotograph. Uh, so astrophotography, is it? Astro astrophotography, what is the best lens to use? Um, I think you need a, a, a wide lens and uh, maybe yeah. I, I can answer that. Uh, I can answer that, Shankar. So basically, uh, for astrophotography, you need a super wide uh, angle, uh, a 1020, a 1424 Nikon kind of stuff, uh, or whatever, whatever is the widest, uh, uh, you know, uh, range that you can get. Uh, and if you have a 2.8, nothing like it because you will get the capture the details very well. Uh, so it all depends, but uh, uh, something which is wide enough, like a 10 plus, uh, is definitely required. So. Okay, uh, can Jotsna is asking, can we get rental cameras? Of course, yes. Uh, Bangalore, Pune, Chennai, Hyderabad, a lot of uh, these major metro cities. Uh, there are lots of them. Uh, we don't have a, a list of things here right now, but people who are in Bangalore, I can definitely comment that uh, there are a lot of them. Please uh, Google them out. Uh, Told is one company that does rent it out and there are a lot of them. Uh, please reach out to them. We don't uh, at Honeycomb rent out lenses, uh, but uh, yeah, there are a lot of them. You can get in touch with us uh, if you want some more help. Uh, there's Ramya who is asking, uh, I have a Canon 600D budding photographer. Uh, I'm focusing somewhere else, uh, but want to learn how to take best shots. I think this is answered already, Ramya. Uh, it all depends on uh, the learning. So if you need more assistance, I would uh, recommend that you join some professional workshops or uh, uh, get a mentor to help you uh, because that's, that's an art and that's a very important art. Uh, Shankar, I think you agree. You can also join TGIS, uh, you know, Mithun, you can uh, sure. ask people to join TGIS uh, group as well. And we inform you of any workshops that are coming by. So, Absolutely. those so, of you so, trying to uh, join TGIS, you can get in touch with Mithun and uh, he will help you to yeah. uh, connect with TGIS. So, for anything and everything, please reach out to me, uh, uh, PM me on to whatever. I already put my Facebook and Instagram handles, so you can reach out and then I can guide you. Where to eat. So don't worry about it, Ramya. We can definitely assist you. Um, I know that there were a lot of questions on the Jagachitra contest. We don't have too much of time, but uh, in the interest of uh, uh, the questions to be answered, uh, uh, Sanisha from the team had already shared into the chat, uh, you know, the link to register uh, the email address of the TJS Bangalore group uh, to reach out. So please reach out there. Uh, we'll definitely assist you. Uh, you'll have to do it quick because the registration ends, like Shankar said, on Monday, end of day. Uh, but uh, you can always reach out to us. Uh, you know, we can help you uh, because it's a uh, the pictures that you select. What you, you you might have a lot of questions. We can uh, definitely answer via that. Uh, but definitely do participate, folks, because that will help you. Uh, you know, in displaying your uh, this thing and for the cost. Um. I think there was a, another question from Sajib on uh, what lens typically Shankar do you use for shooting birds and wildlife? Any specific uh, choice? I use a very simple 150 600mm uh, Tamron lens. But, um, you know, sometimes I do higher, uh, you know, 500mm lenses or 600mm uh, lenses. Right. I think there were a lot of questions on career opportunities, Shankar. Uh, I think you evoked a lot of interest in people. So, are there any career opportunities? Uh, for the youngsters, especially. Uh, one minute. I was just uh, trying to find that. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, well, I'll just put this here so that uh, okay, that let this be there on the on the screen here. Yeah, so career opportunities. Uh, so right now, if I were to say there are uh, there there is money, uh, if you're looking at money, making money, I am not the right person because I don't make much money <laughs> on my photography. Uh, there is uh, wedding photography. There is uh, advertising uh, photography, uh, product photography, uh, and there's a lot of money in videos. Uh, so video is really gaining uh, speed. So those of you who want to, uh, there's some noise. Okay, so uh, uh, if you're if you're looking at uh, uh, making money through photography, these are fashion um, agency work, uh, product photography. Uh, weddings, uh, event photography, these are all things where there is there is money. Uh, so if you want to do that, you can you can uh, you know uh, intern with some uh, of the studios and and photographers and see if you can be an apprentice with them and then slowly learn the ropes and then uh, get get to do your own stuff as you go along. Right. So I think there was a question, um, and in fact, multiple questions from Arun. Are uh, so there were six questions, but uh, I think uh, more of them, most of them were answered. But there's one specific question, Shankar, on uh, what impact uh, can a black and white picture create? Okay, so yeah, why why would we use black and white? You know, and I I, I remember that I used this uh, for the NGO uh, when we were taking pictures. Um, uh, black and white uh, is having this very uh, emotional, evocative uh, quality. And when you're trying to depict, especially uh, more like a documentary style photography, um, the, and especially where people are involved, I would, I would uh, use the black and white option and it, it works out so well. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's very important to know when uh, black and white is to be used or when uh, Colors to be used because if 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 color is something is as part of the story, then I don't think I would want to use uh, you know black and white there. It's, it's, if color is something that's adding value, but if if I want to focus on emotions, then I, I don't want the colors to distract. Uh, then I would I would use the black and white option there. I remember doing uh, some work for MSSI where we uh, did a uh, exhibition which. Uh, reflected the invisible symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And I use black and white and they are such powerful images that people, when they looked at those images, they felt, you know, they, they felt, you know, they, they told me that it felt so uncomfortable. And they said, you know, I, I could actually feel what an MS person is feeling with those invisible symptoms. So yeah, that's the, that's the power of those photographs and that's the power of those black and white images. Absolutely. Uh, the, the... Uh, I, I would want to answer a few questions uh, that were asked on joining TGIS that I'm outside Bangalore, doesn't matter uh, wherever you are, even if you're outside India, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, we do, of course, you know, we would love to be uh, meet, meeting you in person, but then it doesn't matter the, uh, you know, for these exhibitions and everything. In fact, it is a good opportunity for you to travel to Bangalore and meet all of us. Uh, so, but if you are from Calcutta or you're from outside India, don't worry. Uh, please get in touch with us. Uh, please join us uh, and have uh, the joy of all of it. Uh, Sajeev, this is for you. Um, I will just take last three questions, Shankar, because it's already uh, over, uh, a lot over time. Uh, thank you very much. I think more than 50, 60 people I still see have booked on. So that uh, tells uh, you know how much uh, beneficial this uh, session is. Uh, and apologies in case if we are not picked up your questions. Like I said, I will definitely uh, will get in touch by, uh, with you back uh, to answer. Uh, but there's, there was a question on visual narration from Pranji. He wanted to know what is the role of uh, visual narration in the photography and why is it important? Uh, so uh, I I used to uh, take those beautiful images. Uh, that's what I was focusing on for almost uh, the first 10 years of my work is my my job is to go and you know, capture these, uh, these one beautiful image or this one, uh, you know, just that one image that would really tell the entire story. But uh, I was... Uh, uh, went to a workshop by a gentleman by name Tefik El Sawi, uh, who is a travel photographer, and he introduced me to this concept of documentary travel photography, and uh, it was an eye opener for me, because uh, how do you tell a story, let's say, with twenty images? And I think uh, Manish and I have done a, a webinar uh, before, 
I think it was on Instagram. I think so. I think it was there Instagram on, live. Yes. Yeah, Instagram live, and we we talked about it, and uh, it was a completely new thing. That how do I tell a story with say twenty images? What was those twenty images be? So I was my whole thought process started, uh, you know, changing with this this concept where I was only looking at one well composed, beautiful, um, you know, excellent image. And I missed out on so many different opportunities to really capture the final details of the moment of the event. And uh, I, I think uh, I think that's where I, I, I moved on to that, uh, that when I go now, let's say, I, I, you know, when you go to Paris, you know, I just don't want to capture the Eiffel Tower and come back and say, I have captured Paris. So there's a lot more to Paris than just the Eiffel Tower. Or you don't want to go to Rome and go to the Colosseum and say, look, I've captured Rome in uh, one image and capture the Colosseum and come back. There's so much to do in Rome. So if you want to go to Mysore, it's just not the palace. There's so many things in Mysore. Just go on to the, uh, onto the market and go on to the various shopping streets and the eateries and these restaurants. There's so much one can capture. So I think the, the narrative, I think the storytelling uh, aspect uh, with one, one image is, is fine. But to be able to tell a story with multiple images and weave the story together, I think that's an art. And I think that's this, this where I have moved on to. Great. Uh, last two questions, uh, Shankar, uh, uh, I will take. Uh, one is on the creative side of the photography that you mentioned. So what is uh, really required when you say creative photography? And how to do it? This so, so, yeah, so there's... You know, there is there are certain things. For example, if you go to the uh, go to the Taj Mahal, right, and then you know everybody goes to the Taj Mahal. They go right in the center. There's this bench. There's this uh, you know uh, leading lines and this beautiful uh, you know fountain that is there in the center. And you have those symmetrical you know pillars in the Taj Mahal. Yeah, you got this image. Fine. So everybody shot this image. All right. It's okay. So what is what is your next? What is your, your next, next angle? Where are you going to shoot the Taj from? What, are you, what is going to happen? So, so when, you, when you, you want to be the same old, same old, what everybody's done, then it's not going to help you because everybody, a million, million, a zillion uh, people, I don't know, a billion people must have visited, I don't know, Taj Mahal. And they've shot Taj Mahal from all angles. But if you just look at Raghurai, and you, he's made a book from Taj Mahal, and he took, I think, around three to four years to shoot the Taj Mahal. If you look at it and so wondering, hey, where did this guy shoot this uh, Taj from? Where did this image come from? Where, where did he shoot this Taj from? And that's the thing about, you know, what is the alternative, you know, that you can come up with uh, to, to tell the story, you know, because everybody has been there to the same place. Now, what are you, what is the next best angle that you can come up with? So the, the lighting, the angle, the, um, uh, the composition, uh, the, the perspective, I think I think there is so much to uh, you know to 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 the image at the end of the day, and that's where you bring in your creativity. You don't want to be the same old, same old. What's the next next best picture you can take? And then that it means that you have to think, like I said, you have to get your creative thinking hat on. So you want to go to Humpy, right? Everybody is shot Humpy now a billion times from different angles. No stone has been left uncovered in Humpy. Now you want to go to Humpy now. What are, you, what are you going to do there? How are you going to take the picture? What is going to do? Uh, well, what are you going to show in Humpy, which has not been shown before? Right. right. Um, I think uh, last two questions. Uh, I, I've been saying that last two questions, but I think <laughs> really last two questions. Uh, I think most of them we have answered uh, uh, or we have asked to get in touch with us. Uh, one question on the same question that uh, follow-up question on the black and white. Uh, so what is your picking point for Selecting a black and white versus color. Yeah, we've answered that already. So maybe take another. One. And the last one, uh, which is uh, which form of learning has been found as most effective, efficient way of learning photography, according to you, with your. Yeah, I think uh, that's an important question. I think, see, if you're talking about fundamentals and basics, I think you should go to a proper workshop and don't 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 depend on YouTube for learning fundamentals and basics. But when you're talking about, let us say, you are adding on, you know, what do you say? Uh, a plugin, let us say you want to learn, uh, let's say again, you want to learn Photoshop or Lightroom. You attend a basic workshop on Photoshop and Lightroom. I, I, I would urge you to do that. But let's say you want to, let's say, see a particular component on, on how to improve, let's say, uh, do skin smoothing in uh, Photoshop or Lightroom. 
uh, that is available on YouTube. There are some ten different, uh, you know, um, ways you could do that. Or how do you how do you remove background? So you want to learn that. So yeah, you could you could probably use uh, Photoshop, uh, YouTube for that. So I think I think when I, I I would say that learning the fundamentals and basic, please do attend a, a proper uh, learn from a proper person from a proper workshop. I would like you to. Do. Then of course, uh, for, just to add on, keep adding on to that. YouTube is a great great resource. But if you want to learn something, uh, a different style and a different way of looking at it, uh, whenever you see these these uh, photography festivals in Hyderabad, they regularly have these photography festivals. And I, I remember I met uh, this gentleman, Sandro, and he was doing portrait photography. Such a revealing uh, thing that, uh, you know, um, to, to learn uh, portrait photography from Sandro, you know, the way he did lighting, how, how simple, you know, we, we don't, he was just using a single light to create some amazing images and the angles which he was shooting, the, the photographs he was showing, it, it, was, it was amazing to see him work uh, those images. So I think uh, uh, observing photo, uh, you know, famous photographers, uh, attending workshops of uh, photographers will be a great, uh, uh, great learning experience.